What time is it? There we go. We made it. Yeah, there we go. All right. Hey, well, so is that health care Atlanta? Then not this year. Yes, yeah, a little, a little difference. That Promise Center in Atlanta. So um, I'll just go with that, and then you guys can use it. Um, this is a spot uh, last year um, Sarah and I raised some money uh, for what we're calling the ATL uh, project, and uh, as a result of it, so many people were generous, we raised quite a bit of money and uh, have turned it into a foundation that we're now uh, running and have hired T uh, Taylor Stanley to run it for us, and she's done a great job. But, you know, part of what we talked about at that time was investing in um, – at-risk spots in Atlanta. And the first place that we decided to donate to was the At Promise Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do a great job providing after-school programs for kids uh, and putting them, you know, in spots to be successful. And it's been a, it's been a struggle. COVID has been a struggle for uh, lots of after-school programs in the city. And, um, you know, we're just trying to support them where we can. And so I'm excited about it, um, excited to wear those, and, you know, excited to represent them. And excited about you know what ATL is going to do uh, as we move forward. We really feel like we've got uh, a good foundation to support already existing organizations that might need a little bit of help um, to continue to do some of the things that they've done, particularly uh, with the stresses of the last year and a half. So um, I'm excited to represent them this week. And uh, after, I mean, you know, after my kids are out of college now, but after school is so important in their development. How did y'all identify that? And you know, making sure they go from, you know, sometimes you can't get there, you got to go to the after school program. For sure. Yeah. You, you know, um, I think the stat at the time when we started was that for every two kids who need an after school program in the city of Atlanta, there was one space available. And uh, you'd like to see that number, you know, eventually uh, increase to where, you know, hopefully we're at a space in the future where everybody who needs it can get it. We're not there yet. Um, and it's not our sole mission, but our, our mission is to support those organizations, you know, that, that are already doing a great job and just need a little bit of help. Um, we decided specifically on At Promise to start because they support kids who have, uh, who, who might have made a mistake um, and not be accepted into some other programs, uh, after school programs. And, and At Promise uh, does a great job of, of taking in those kids. And so, um, I'm a big believer in that, you know, second chances and, and you know, we're all, um, you know, not where we, we end up being when we're 14, 15, 16 years old. And uh, to continue to support kids, you know, that age or younger uh, it is important. But I am a big proponent of after school programs. I think, um, you know, it's huge um, to have someplace safe and productive um, and well run. Uh, to go uh, during that time, you know, to bridge that gap between getting home and, you know, the few hours that you have uh, after school, which can be tough uh, for families, you know, who are working and um, don't have somebody at home. I think that's important. So we're trying to support that as best we can. Anything else we can transition? Uh, thank you for that, Matt. Um, the run game, that was a big takeaway from last game, and now – you know, the challenge is to do it again, right. I would imagine, against the number one ranked run defense. What are some of the challenges? Yeah, they present, they present a lot of, of challenges uh, with both scheme and personnel. Uh, they do a great job of, of playing aggressive. Uh, Todd, Todd Bowles does a great job of putting their guys in position to be successful against the run. Uh, and then when you do have, you know, good looks, you've got to handle uh, the talent that they have up front. And I think, um, you know, they've certainly been very productive against the run this year, and it's going to be a good challenge for us. I think, you know, um, we just haven't been in a rhythm uh, that much in the past game. And I think a lot of it comes down to early just getting some momentum. I thought last week, you know, while the numbers weren't great, we did a pretty good job converting third downs early, which is huge. We've got the run game going, uh, which we relied on heavy. Um, but I think it's it's just about rhythm, you know, trying to put guys in position to make plays and, uh, you know, continuing to make sure my footwork's, you know, in a really good spot to deliver the ball effectively. But I really do think it, it just comes down to a play here or there to get us into a rhythm. Do you feel like your, your rhythm is okay? Because, I mean, it looked like there were some pretty open passes that were missed against the Jaguars. 
Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I, I think there's probably two that I think of, you know, and so I think, you know, from a whole sample size, I don't think it's huge, but uh, you gotta you gotta be in good position, and I, I think I can do a better job than I've done the last couple of weeks. This might be a real question, but is there more? Because it's sometimes people in mental thing or something when maybe a guy it because both I think the two meetings that we're both picking up were pretty open, and you haven't exactly had a bunch of open receivers a ton this year. Just, is there something to that when maybe a guy is open, it can almost be too open? No. <laughs> I think I, no, I hear you. You know, it's it's one of those things. Don't screw it up when guys are open. But I will take open open guys all day. You know, I've I've been pretty good throughout my career of of uh, being accurate. You know, in those type of situations. But it's part of sports. You miss. You know, and um, you can't let it linger. You just you know get back to work and you know have a great week of practice. And you know, that's what I'm focused on this week. Well, you know, they, they do a great job um, up front of forcing you to get the ball out early. And uh, I think in the secondary, they play complementary football. They do a very nice job of, of staying aggressive uh, and trying to, you know, play some, mix it up, whether it's man-to-man -man coverage with tight press coverage or, you know, play different types of zone to try and confuse you. And they do a good job uh, in their secondary of being in the right places. They'll give you a look pre-snap that looks like one thing and be in different spots post-snap. So... I think Todd has uh, always done a great job um, with the defenses that I played against in the past of, of trying to you know create confusion uh, and put guys in position to be successful in the back end by creating you know lots of issues up front. How much more excited is this game being at home and being one of the top teams in the division? And of course, you know, arguably one of the hottest quarterbacks right now. How important would it be to just get this win to get that? Well, it's a, it's a really good challenge for us. You know, you get into the month of December, and uh, we're excited, you know, that we're in the mix. And, um, you know, you're going to have to play teams like this late in the year and, uh, and, and, and step up to that challenge. So it's going to be, you know, really fun atmosphere. They're a really good team, obviously defending, you know, Super Bowl champs. And I think they're 8-3 and three right now. So, you know, they play good football this year as well. So it's going to be a really good challenge for us. Pretty similar question there, but um, after the first loss to Tampa, after the game, you said, you know, we're, we know we're going to, but we're excited to still be, you know, the potential of what this team could be in December and January. You know, you guys are here in December now. Uh, how would you assess where this team is at right now facing Tampa the second time versus the first time? Yeah, I think, you know, we, we've kind of clawed our way into the mix. And, um, you know, it hasn't been, hasn't been perfect, hasn't been pretty all the time, but but we're at a position where we can still do everything we want to do and accomplish everything that we would like to accomplish. And so, um, you know, I felt like we could get to this position. Uh, the path probably isn't, you know, the exact path I thought it might be, um, you know, but we're in, we're in a good spot. And so I think we're a different football team, <coughs> you know, at this point um, in terms of personnel and just the wear and tear of the year, how things go, you know, put you, put you in this spot. Uh, and I think the same's you know true for them. You know I think they're a different football team than we saw all week two. What, what path did you think? Well, I would have thought we would have been. What are we? Five and six. So that's eleven games in. Nine and two. That's where I would have thought we would have been after zero and two for sure. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Go down the list. <laughs> The, you know, the Browns used to run in guard, but I haven't seen rotating centers before. Um, and, and Coach said he talked to you about it mm -hmm. uh, to get you on board. Uh, how that go? How can it, uh, you know, work uh, down stretch here for you? I thought both guys did a good job. Uh, you know, I thought that after the game Sunday, and, you know, I thought that after watching it, um, you know, Monday morning as well. I thought, you know, both guys came in from an identification standpoint in the run game. I thought they did a nice job. Uh, and both, you know, from a physical standpoint, I thought, you know, played well. And so, you know, I think you got you to do whatever you got to do to win. And uh, this time of the year, whatever that looks like, we've got a group of guys that, you know, are unselfish and put the team first. And, um, you know, Art works really hard uh, all week, you know, to, to try and come up with the best possible uh, 
you know, game plan, whether it be plays and players, uh, for us to be successful this week. And so we'll see what that looks like at the end of the week. But um, from what I saw from both those guys last week, I thought they did a nice job. And uh, just on one of my matchups, I got the safeties, uh, uh, Winfield and, and, you know, uh, Whitehead and, you know, Pitts just kind of, they might end up, you know, yeah. Going out of there at some point. Yeah, yeah. I thought, you know, I thought Kyle did a good job uh, the first time, you know, it was his second game. And, and I thought he made a few really good plays for us uh, in that game, created some explosives. Again, I think, um, you, you know, he, he's come a long way, you know, since that point. And, and I think he's playing really good football for us. And so um, it'll, be, it'll be a good matchup. You know, I think every team, you know, that we've played probably the last four or five weeks have, have tried to have a plan to, you know, adjust for what Kyle can do. And uh, I would expect that to be, you know, the same this week. I think, like I said, I think Todd always does a good job of, of putting their guys in position to be successful. Chris, back to training camp, you talked about A.J. Terrell pattern of recognition and consistency. What is it, you know, obviously it's not a ton you see out there maybe every day in practice, but what is it maybe where you see even that improve over the last, you know, 11, 12, 13, whatever it's been? Yeah, I think he's played great. Uh, he really has. And, you know, I think a lot of it probably is, you know, not only um, experience of, of just seeing more things, but I also think the experience of, of how to get himself prepared, you know, every week. Um, he's a really mature young player. And, um, you know, he, he works really hard in the weight room. He works really hard, you know, in the film room, uh, in meetings. He, he's one of those guys that's constantly locked in. And I think – you know, he, he's, he's gotten himself to a really good position of knowing what he needs to do through the course of the week to prepare himself to be ready to go to go play his best. Uh, and that's huge for us right now. And, and I also think, you know, he, I've always felt it, you know, playing against him in practice, you know, that he has really good pattern recognition. But I also think that he's probably a lot further along within what the defense is asking him to do. So he's a lot more comfortable in our own scheme, too, of, you know, where the help is and, you know, where some of the issues are and, um, he never really seems to get himself out of position. Some of the guys on defense have said that, like, I think actually Brandon Copeland said that, you know, it's like almost playing against the great Garrett. And, like, there's a sense of comfort knowing that he can maybe recover a little more. When you're facing a guy like him, mm -hmm. what does that do to a quarterback when you know what is potentially on that side? you got to be on point. You know, you, you really have to be on point. And um, you've got to – you know, you've got to be very concrete on your own side, you know, of, of you know, certain routes you'd like to try them on uh, and certain routes you'd like to stay away from them on. Uh, and, and I think, you know, I think having gone against a lot of really good corners, you know, in my career, um, that's one of the things that has helped me, you know, playing against those guys. I think so. You know, I think, uh, you know, we've been in some tough spots throughout the year. Um, and, and kind of at every, every spot, we've kind of found our way to get back in, you know. And, and um, I think through 11 games, I'd, I'd certainly say that's our identity. You know, it hasn't been perfect, um, you know, but we found ways. And ultimately, that's all you got to do. You got to find different ways every week uh, to get the job done. And hopefully you're continuing to improve, you know, as the year has gone on. And I think there's kind of been ups and downs for us. Uh, you know, maybe like the, a couple steps forward, one or two steps back. Uh, but you got to believe it's constant progress. And uh, I do think we've done that. I think it looks great. I got to be honest with you, I wasn't heavily involved in the design. <laughs> I leave that to uh, people who are more artistically inclined than myself. Um, I don't think anybody would want me kind of sketching out what it should look like. But I think they did a great job. I love that it's the black and red kind of representing, you know, our city and uh, with the skyline on it. I think it looks great. So um, I think they did a great job. Awesome. Thanks, All right. Matt. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.